All right, welcome back to this video lecture. And let's just do a little review. This is the part we're making. These are the dimensions, obviously. And this is the stuff that we've been going over. And we're still on the basics of sketching. And I'm going to start talking about components and groups. And then we'll get to finishing the part using this, and then how to export it, and then how to render it. <coughs> So let's talk about components and groups real quick. Notice I can select all the faces here. And in right here in Outliner, it just says untitled. There's really nothing too much in the uh, model tree. If I click on Entity Info, it just says it's a layer with a square area of 4.412 meters squared. Now if I triple click it, it says that there's 74 entities um, and no other information given. So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to say make group. And it says group right here. I can click it, go to hide. It's not there anymore. But it still shows it here, which is really handy. Unhide it. Instead of trying to fiddle around with here to unhide things, if I select this, notice it says solid group. It gives me a volume. Whenever you make groups or components, you always want to make sure it says a solid in it. And if it doesn't, then you run this tool called Solid Inspector Squared, and it will say that there's some sort of error. Mine says no errors, everything is shiny. If there is an error, so I'm going to double click it to get in here to edit it, and I'm just going to draw a line on the face that comes off like that. Maybe that'll mess up the geometry. Okay, it does. See how it does not say solid group anymore? Run solid inspector and it says, hey, there are two stray edges. And it highlights them in red. If I hit fix, look at that. Now sometimes it does not fix everything, which is alright. You'll have to do some further investigation. Usually if you go into x-ray mode, which is right here, on one of the standard views, you can see if there's any holes or anything in the mesh. Click it to go off. Okay, so I'm going to right click and hit explode. That gets us back to the regular thing. Now I'm going to show you what a component is. Groups are great, they're quick and they're easy. Make a component. Now it's going to say what do you want to name it? I'm going to name this main body. Um, there's also alignments we can do. I'm not going to worry about those right now. I can put a description. We can do that. Um, main body of part. Cool. And then hit create. Notice up here it gives us the name. And instead of a solid black square, it's two. It's, I mean, four little black squares to make one large one. Now let's show you something cool. I'm going to hit M for the move tool. Now if I go down here modifier keys control equals toggles a copy of the selection okay so I'm gonna hold control I'm gonna click and I'm just gonna drag it right there along the green so now I have another copy now I'm going to open this one up and edit it I'm gonna put a circle on its face right here and look what happened over here it puts the circle there I'm gonna push it down and look what's going on. Look at that. Isn't that pretty cool? It makes a copy at the component level. So with groups it does not do that. And then I'm just going to erase that. So I still have that one but for right now we're going to explode this so that we don't have any components and we're going to continue moving on with our model. So the next thing we're going to work on are these holes and the chamfers. So let's find hole placement. It says that both holes are 0 0.707 inches from this bottom edge, not this top edge, from this bottom. Most likely it's going to be centered though from symmetry and it looks like the diameter is 0.6 so actually let's zoom in make sure is that a 6 or a 5 that is a 5 so 
half an inch. Okay, is there any more placements? Yes, uh, 0 0.750 from the center line over. Okay, so we need to make a center line on this. So I'm going to use, let's see, how do I want to do this? Drag with the tape measure and click it right there. That kind of works, you know, but it doesn't really give us a center line. So what I'm going to do is Control Z that. I'm just going to use L for line tool. Go up here. Oh, duh. No, I don't know why I'm doing that. From the center. Okay, yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Line tool to the center. Tape. Measure. I forgot the distance already. 0.75. So, 0.75, okay, 0.75, and then we just need to drag this up to the center, right there. Perfect. Look at that. We can actually erase this line now. Now, if I hit C for circle, if you look right here where it says sides 24, uh, a circle is created by 24 line segments. I want more than that. I usually go for 48 because um, I like doing things in groups of 12 when it comes to SketchUp, it just makes it easier. Okay, our holes are half an inch diameter. SketchUp does things in radii, so two and a half inches for the radius. So, not two and a half, sorry, um, 0.25. All right, now the holes go all the way through. So we're just going to pull that down, keep holding the left click button until you can get to right there. Now all you got to do is come up here and double click. Boom, and it's all the way through. Okay, go ahead and erase the lines. And I'm going to go ahead and save. This is a great time to save. So, flash drive. Corner block. Give it a minute to save. Okay, perfect. Now, let's worry about the chamfer next. It shows, um, does it tell us what type of chamfer? does not. Okay, so usually a standard chamfer is a two millimeter um, offset and then angled 45 degrees in. So since this is in inches, I don't want to convert millimeters to inches. I'm just going to make a circle. I'll show you what I'm going to do. C for circle. Let's find our center point. Okay, never mind. Let's make this easier. Right here, left side offset. I want to click that circle. That's not what I wanted to do. I don't know why I did that. Oh, goodness. And I'm looking at that point zero seven five meters. That looks pretty good to me. So, 0 0.075, I'm going to type that one in and hit enter. Okay. Alright, now to make the chamfer, this is where it can get a little tricky. We need to go to view, and we need to go to hidden geometry. See how it shows these lines? Hit the tape measure, pick the closest one in the center, drag and hold it. That's not going to do that for me. Come on. Uh, right there, okay. Until you can get this long line all the way up, click it, and then it's going to put a guide right there. So let's try that again. So zoom in a little bit, click and hold until it shows up, and there you go. Whoops, I got to 
actually, there we go. We may only need one of them. Okay, so here's where the fun begins. I'm going to select this, hold control. I'm going to select, dang it. Con okay, click on the inner ring right here. Okay, M for the move tool. Come down here to look at the modifiers and Alt toggles the auto fold selection. That is what we're going to be dealing with. So you want to zoom in, you want to hold Alt, and you want to grab right here and you want to drag down this and you want to stay on that guide. With that little red square. And you're going to You're going to do it for just a little bit of a distance, and you're going to let go, and then you're going to type in, I don't know, 0 0.075, okay? And then that pulls that lip down, so you can see how it does a cone shape on it. So there's our chamfer there, which is good. So don't delete any lines yet, we need to do it to this side, so now we need to do offset on this by 0 0.075 same with this 0 0.075 I am typing them out okay and then spacebar for select I'm gonna hit that one control that one then M for the move tool click and hold alt and then click right along here just drag down that arrow just a little bit, let go, type in point zero seven five. There we go. So now we got chamfers at the end. So erase those. View hidden geometry. Okay. Now we got our chamfers. So we can countersink some sort of bolt into that. And just because I want to, at the end, I always make it a solid. So make component. I'm going to put main body. Now this is just saying a component with that name already exists. You want to replace it? Yes, because I deleted that one. So up here it says it's a solid. Shows me my volume. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now what can I do with this volume? Well, the beauty of it is density of an object is mass divided by volume. So if you wanted to make this part out of steel and it was in the right dimensions for inches, we would be able to say, well, steel has this type of density and we wanted to find its mass. We just take density, multiply it by its volume to get its mass and then that way you could calculate a price off of it and I've written a spreadsheet for that which I could attach to the YouTube video but speaking of this let's do the last thing that we need to do we know it has a height of four inches so let's scale this down to inches now um, tape measure tool hover right here hold control click down all the way till you know until it says 4.00 meters left click to finish it and then type in 4.000 hold shift and make the quotations for inches hit enter it says do you want to resize the model hit yes control shift E now go to window model info switch this from meters to inches and check up here all the way down to here and look at that it's four inches so everything is now up to scale it still says it's a solid and I can save it with no issue okay now one last extension I forgot to mention was this one that you go to the extension warehouse and it's called export STL this will allow you to export it 
if you have multiple objects in here and you have one of them selected just do export only current selection I always do it in millimeters and I always do it in ASCII and then just export it and we'll export it as an STL for people who do 3D printing now always make sure before you go to export it that it says solid and if it's not a solid do the best you can to make sure that um, there's no holes in the mesh but if there is a small one some of them are fine you just need to make sure that your 3d printing software can handle that I mean I've printed some that weren't solids and it, it was fine but it's better if it is a solid okay so let's make sure we've gone over everything we've done this 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 the extensions basics of sketching components and groups I showed you the demonstration with that using the auto fold feature to create the chamfers export for 3d printing and now rendering so let's say you wanna make this some sort of photorealistic um, thing uh, and, and it's we want it on a table top so I don't know I'm, I'm just gonna uh, that's driving me crazy okay that's what I want right there okay so push pull I'm gonna pull down right about there I'm going to where's my paint bucket I'm going to go to wood cherry original hold shift I paint well, I don't want to paint all those surface come on there we go paint all those paint all these okay now we need to be able to zoom and see how it looks really fuzzy that means we need to go to edit and this right here tells us how many per um, inches it's repeating the pattern so if I hit one zero look at that now you can see every ten I think it's every ten meters or ten feet or ten inches it's ten something is repeating the pattern okay do I have a component let's let's not move that let's make this a component call it base I want to move it along the green so that it's somewhat like that okay double click this so we're inside the component I want to go to metal I'm just going to do anodized aluminum I'm going to shift look at that okay so you must be wondering why I'm doing all this I'll show you because we need to apply materials okay for it to render I'm going to place the camera right there so when you have twilight render available if you see this little bucket this is your uh, template materials you're going to click that little what you call little eyedropper is going to come up click here and then in here it's going to show up turn bump to sketch up then go to templates go to wood and I'm gonna pick let's go with gloss this should be sketch up that should be sketch up this is what that material anything labeled wood cherry original will now show up as that inside this model now I'm gonna click this and we're gonna go template we're going to go to I like the brushed metal we're, mm, let's just do regular aluminum bump for SketchUp everything set to SketchUp and you can turn down the shininess if you want but anything labeled metal aluminum anodized is now going to use this template okay so environment right now I have it set to physical sky so we're gonna be outside we can change it to be inside but you have to download a package from a website but that will be another video for right now let's just do it outside with the Sun enabled and now we're just gonna hit render 
I'm going to do it at a medium. Go ahead and hit render and it'll take its time. And as you can see, we have the sun coming in at this angle. And we have something down here called post processing. Give it a second here when it's done. Okay, render is complete. So, post process. We can change our exposure and our gamma to be a little bit brighter, a little bit dimmer, however you want. So that's what that looks like. But now, let's change the view. Let's change it to be like this. I'm going to go back into the render and then we're going to re-render it. Now you can see the wood grain really showing up. Post process, let's turn the exposure up a little bit. There we go. Looks like it's about dusk. If you want it to be in the afternoon, just keep going up. And let's mess with that just a little bit more. 140 is pretty good. And there you have a finished part that we made. And it's been rendered to look like a photorealistic render of an aluminum part on a cherry wood table. So, that is the first lesson of SketchUp Basics. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And stay tuned for the next set, which will be going over more advanced modeling, including solid modeling, um, and how to use solid tools to create more solids. So it's going to be pretty exciting. So stay tuned, and I hope to further this project so that you guys can learn SketchUp and be able to 3D model at home and create things that you've always wanted to create. So thank you again.